Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and make it our glory to praise you. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in <coughs> my thoughts and in my words <coughs> in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, <clears throat> may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you <clears throat> with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of the Kings. In the presence of the whole assembly of Israel, Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord and stretching out his hands towards heaven, said, Lord God of Israel, not in heaven above nor on earth beneath, is there such a God as you? True to your covenant and your kindness toward your servants when they walk wholeheartedly in your way. Yet, will God really live with men on the earth? Why the heavens and their own heavens cannot contain you? How much less this house that I have built? Listen to the prayer and entreaty of your servant, Lord my God, Listen to the cry and to the prayer a servant makes to you today. Day and night, let your eyes watch over this house, over this place of which you have said, My name shall be there. Listen to the prayer that your servant will offer in this place. Hear the entity of your servant and of Israel your people, as they pray in this place. From heaven, where your dwelling is, hear, and as you hear, forgive. This is the word of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord God of hosts. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord God of hosts. My soul is longing and yearning, is yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my soul ring out their joy to God, the living God. How lovely is your God. The sparrow herself finds a home and the swallow a nest for her brood. She lays her young by your altars, Lord of hosts, my king and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord God of hosts. They are happy who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Turn your eyes, O God, our shield. Look on the face of your anointed. Lord God of hosts, one day 
within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. The threshold of the house of God I prefer to the dwellings of the wicked. Alleluia, alleluia. Bend my heart to your will, O Lord, and teach me your law. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. <clears throat> the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and the Jews, in general, follow the tradition of the elders and never eat without washing their arms as far as the elbow. And on returning from the marketplace, they never eat without first sprinkling themselves. There are also many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders, but eat their food with unclean hands? He answered, It was of you, hypocrites, that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in this passage of scripture. These people honors me only with lip service, while their hearts are far from me. The worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human regulations. You put aside the commandment of God to cling to human traditions, and he said to them, how ingeniously you get round the commandment of God in order to preserve your own tradition. For Moses said, Do your duty to your father and your mother, and anyone who curses father or mother must be put to death. But you say, If a man says to his father or mother, Anything I have that I might have used to help you, is korban, that is, dedicated to God. Then he is forbidden from that moment to do anything for his father or mother. In this way, you make God's word null and void for the sake of your tradition, which you handed down, and you do many other things like this. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. I am Reverend Father Jeffrey Mirasol. I am a diocesan priest from the Archdiocese of Zamboanga in the Philippines. With me is the group of people or pilgrims. We started our pilgrimage yesterday. And we are so blessed to be here with you. I remember in one of my individual colloquia, when I was still a seminarian, then I was not yet a priest. And one of the formations needed for a student to become a priest, he needs to undergo a series of colloquia or conferences. During that time, I could not forget the date. It was February 11, 2011, on the feast day of Our Lady of Lourdes. I was about to leave the seminary because it was never in my mind, personally and honestly, that I really wanted to become a priest. I entered the seminary because I came from a very poor family. 
That was the very reason why I joined. Because in our country, when you enter the seminary, there is always a free education offered to you. So I took that as an opportunity for me to grab a free education because I wanted to have a degree. So I, I told my formator, my priest companion in the formation, I said, it would be unjust and unfair for the archdiocese, the archdiocese is spending a lot of money for me in the formation, and then later on, I'll just leave the seminary. So I said, I would like to apply for a leave of absence from the seminary. And I don't like anymore to continue my priesthood, my formation in the seminary. And my priest companion asked me, what's the reason behind this intention? You are doing good academically. You have been excelling in all aspects of the seminary formation. And then abruptly, you said now that you wanted to leave the seminary. Can you state the reasons? And one of the reasons I said, <clears throat> I believe I, meaning to say personally, I believe that I cannot become a good priest. I know that from my mind and from my heart, I can't be a good priest. You know, Father, with all these reasons that I have, with all these issues, human issues that I have, I cannot become a good priest. You know, since then, I've been telling you that I have a girlfriend and I am not fit to become a priest. And you know, you know how, how the mystery of God reveals to us. Sometimes, our human ways... We think of them are finite and defined, but they are not. You see how this place is so beautiful. We, we keep maintaining and sustaining human traditions. This place is not this, the very place that we had 100 years ago. But you see, and look, how God turned this place as a moment, an event where we can encounter with Him. The same with my human experience. You know, my companion priest just told me, I know you are struggling a lot. I know you. And you know what lacks in your life right now? Is your relationship with your mother. For your information, I was abandoned by my mother when I was three months old. She left me orphaned. So when I grew up and I was growing up, I was looking for an affection of a mother, an affection of a woman. That's why I really thirst for an attention. I was desiring and longing for a relationship with a complete relationship from a woman. So that's one of my issues. But then, God has His own plan for me. During that time, I said, I can, I can give it a try. Why not? I'll meet my mother in person and I'll talk to her. Because that was also the time I learned that my mother would be coming home to Zamboanga. So I took that op an opportunity for me to have a close encounter with her. And that was also the first time to, to meet her. And things turned after I met her. When I was in the seminary formation, honestly, I never had any devotion to the Blessed Mother. I did not even know how to pray the rosary. And I don't pray the rosary, even though I was already in the seminary. You see, I'm now here, standing 
on this very place, on this sanctuary of this woman whom I really hated most before. But this woman saved me. This woman made me a priest. I remember St. Teresa of Lisieux says, Every priest must be close to the heart of a mother. God made me a priest today. And I know it's not my human effort all alone. God intervened in my human experience through a mother. I'm not a good priest. How many times I have been telling this in my homily? I'm not even holy. I'm not even good. But you see, I'm here. In our archdiocese, we have 87 priests. As of the moment, I'm now here in Portugal. And I'm celebrating this Mass with you. How blessed I am. How blessed I am. I don't deserve these blessings. These in plural form. God is blessing me a lot. And I know the reasons why I am blessed. It is precisely because of this woman. This woman who helped me understand why God is so loving, so generous, and he works miraculously every day in my life. When we think about the mystery and revelation of God, we see it explicitly as it is. But then, sometimes or many times, we can understand this mystery. Now, I'd like to give you some points for my reflection, our reflection this afternoon. I'd like to take note from the Gospel reading. The Gospel reading speaks about traditions. We know traditions evolve. They are dynamic in nature. As I said, this place is not the very place 100 years ago. But you see how we keep this place beautiful as it is. Because it's evolving. And part of this evolution is how God works through this. How God reveals himself to us. It's not more on what we have today. What we have today are part of the traditions. There are sacred traditions that don't change. And one thing that I am very sure is the love of God never changes. Though unworthy we are, though we don't merit His love, we don't merit His blessings, but God continues to bless us. Even in the moment of darkness, even in the moment of our unworthiness, here we are. Here we are. We keep holding on. Not just holding on, but upholding. I hope we can continue. We can sustain. Not just the external traditions that we have. This pilgrimage is part of that tradition. That's why it will continue, I believe. Even all of us will die. This tradition will continue. But in our pilgrimage, I hope we can see what's beyond this pilgrimage. We don't just come here to take pictures. They say today that whenever there are two or three gathered, there is always a photo taken. When two or three are gathered, I hope we keep the main tradition. There I am I in your midst. We keep Jesus in our midst. When we go, come to these places, to this pilgrimage, we keep the main tradition. 
And that is Jesus, who is our Savior, our light, and our hope. The Blessed Mother points to us the very persona of Jesus in our life. I remember what Pope Francis said in his homily during, during the solemnity of Mother of God. The reason why we celebrate this solemnity, it is because of her son, Jesus. There is Mary because there is Jesus. So we don't forget this. When we have our devotions, when we have our religious practices, I hope all this will lead us to the very person on the cross. And that person on the cross tells us how God truly loves us. Please stand. <clears throat> we pray this afternoon for our intentions, your intentions. We remember our families, loved ones, and friends. We also pray for those people who are asking of our prayers. We include them in our Mass today. For every petition and prayer, we offer this, and we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we remember our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Please keep him always in your love. Embrace him with mercy. We also remember all the archbishops and bishops throughout the world, especially their prayers and intentions. Please also remember us priests. Please bring us closer to the Blessed Mother. Let the Blessed Mother embrace us as the Son truly loves us. May we become closer to her. Please respond. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for our government leaders, for our president, the presidents of the different nations, those who are serving in the political arena. Please remember them that they may always do what is your will. Please respond. We also remember all our intentions, especially the intentions offered in this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us also pray for our beloved dead. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, we are grateful to you every day of our lives. We give thanks to you, Father, for all the blessings that you have blessed us. As we offer our intentions, we remember the Blessed Mother. May the Blessed Mother intercede in all our prayers. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through Him with great goodness you form it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we to extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Can we chant the Holy, Holy? Holy... Holy, holy Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly <clears throat> into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, 
and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, I peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the land. Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, through faith, may ever increase through Christ our Lord. On behalf of the group, I would like to express my gratitude especially to the people who are administering this place, especially the Bishop, Bishop Joseph. Thank you for allowing me to say this Mass with you. Please keep us in your prayer. Please keep all the priests in your prayer. And I'm very happy to, to inform you that I will celebrate my ninth year as a priest this June 29. And I'm very happy to say... I am still sober and good and even more faithful. I hope I can continue to be faithful, of course, with the Blessed Mother. I have begun to love the Holy Rosary every day and every night. I pray the Holy Rosary, and it helps me. It makes me sober, especially being mindful of my ministry as a priest. Remember what Pope Benedict XVI said, if one priest loses, then a community will also be abandoned. So please pray for us. Try to imagine without me, so there is no one who will celebrate this Mass for you. So we are having our Marian pilgrimage, very beautiful. We are going to the places where the Blessed Mother appeared how blessed we are. So after the Mass, I'll give you the final blessings. I will also bless the religious articles that you have. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Mass is offered. Go in peace. Can we give a big clap to God? Thank you, Lord. So if you have religious articles with you, just raise them up and I will pray over you and give the blessing. Almighty and ever-living God, you are the source and fountain of every blessing. Lord, we ask for your blessings. Send your Holy Spirit to come down upon us this afternoon. Heal these people who are here with us, who are before you. Bless them with your love and be merciful always upon us. Please save all the souls, especially the souls in purgatory and the souls that we have been praying for. Please grant us eternal salvation as we pray and seek for your blessings. All these through Christ our Lord. Amen. Buenas tardes, canatun todo. Muchas gracias.